Hey everyone, today I wanted to take a look at recharge times for the Goal Zero products, especially the Yeti 1000. So what I did is when I was researching buying the product, I spent a lot of time on the site and in the tech specs section, you'll see there's a number of values here. So for the 100 watt panel, it's saying it'll take 16 to 40 hours and the 200 watt panel, it'll take eight to 20 hours. And I couldn't figure out what that meant. I couldn't figure out how that math works. So now I have two 100 watt boulder foldable panels here. That's my standard setup. And today it looked like a nice clear day. So it was gonna be partly cloudy in the morning and then clear up in the afternoon and be totally clear. So I thought it'd be a good day to test it. So I started by plugging in my trusty alarm clock and starting my Yeti in the morning at 8.30. And you can see it starts at 35% and we're sort of zooming through time here. And as the morning goes on, well, you can't really read anything. But picking up my alarm clock, you can see it's 9.35, so it's been 50 minutes and we've gone from 35 to 43% and we're now pulling in about 110 watts. Looking at the sky, you can see things are fairly clear. There's some really high hazy clouds, but things are pretty good. So for the whole day, we want to go from 35 to 100%. So that's going to be 650 watt hours. Uh, we have two 100 watt panels, so that's 200 watts coming in. At best, you're going to get 80 watts per panel. So that's 160 watts. So what I did is I started over with a new stopwatch. That's hopefully a little easier to read as well as an easier to read clock. Sort of getting the display dialed in here so we can keep track of this. Sorry for the jumps. But you can see overall we're pulling in about 125 watts or so by this point in the morning and we're now at 53 percent 54 percent so pretty steady we're getting in the low 60 watts per panel which is pretty good considering it's a hazy day remember our max expected input would be closer to 80 watts that's about as good as you're ever going to get given the losses and other things um, one thing that I started to do though is play around with the angle here. So you'll see the standard goal zero is at 40. Uh, I played around with some books and I ended up putting it at about 60 degrees. And when I played around with it, I ended up seeing much better results. And I actually went and did a little bit of research and it turns out that 60.9 degrees is the ideal um, angle for my panels at this time of year. So what I did and you can see these things side by side, the standard goal zero versus the angled 60, is I just to double check it, put them back down, and you can see we're getting 127, 128 watts with the standard kickstands. And then when I prop them up here on these blocks, we're now getting 139. So we're getting at least another five watts per panel. So that's a solid move. So feel free to adjust your kickstands to get a little more power. You'll see on the clock now, it's 1130. Uh, we're already at 70%. Things are humming along. We're getting close to 70 watts per panel now. You see it's right around 140. And so things seem likely like we're gonna fill it up. And to really juice things, I was just curious if my old Boulder 15 panels could help out. So I have two 15 panels here. Uh, they're wired together. I plugged it into the standard input and it actually adds about 20 watts. So. Um, I'm not going to keep it in there for this whole test. I just put it in there for a minute to see if it would help. Uh, so we're going to unplug that input there and just stick with the two uh, 100 watt panels. But you know, if you have any smaller panels lying around, you might as well plug those in as well. And by 1230, it looked like it was going to be a home run. We had 2.3 hours left and you know, we definitely had that much sunlight left in the day. I definitely thought I was going to get to 100% and then things went south. You can see we started dropping and now we're at zero. Uh, that's not good. And the reason why that happened is it got cloudy all of a sudden and then we got a surprise rainstorm. So you can see here for a very long time, it was not good. Uh, you can see the heavy clouds there. You can see that the solar panels are now wet and they did okay in the rain but uh, that's not going to do us any favors in terms of getting us to 100% today. And you can see here, we're even after quite a bit of time, we're kind of stuck. We're at about five or six watts. So the panels are putting out two or three watts a piece. 
Um, and we're now up to seven, 27 hours until it's full. And those clouds just wouldn't go away. So this is a pretty typical New England day here where things can go from sunny to really cloudy and cold and rainy quickly. And you can see we're just kind of stuck at 82% here. Uh, the time just keeps going up and up and up and that percentage is not going anywhere. And by about 3.30, I decided to call it. It was too cloudy. The sun was starting to go down, it's short days. So for the day here, we've done pretty good. We got to 82%. Um, so we put down and we're able to store 420 watt hours, which is okay. Um, you can see this actually jibes with what my rooftop solar panels are saying as well. Um, so I really wanted to just spend a minute and talk a little bit about how reliable solar power is. So I like it because it's solid state. There's no um, fuel source you need uh, except for the sun. And that's really the big variable. So if you look, this is a typical perfect day. Um, you can see we have a power curve that's similar to what we saw today without the drop off in the afternoon. And you know, this is what you can expect. You can expect, I would say, four to five hours of really good sun. So that 80 watts per panel on a perfectly sunny day, you can expect that for maybe five hours on the high end. And then there's a little bit of uh, energy you'll get in the tail there. So maybe consider that up to an hour um, additional. But the thing to really keep in mind here, and I'm just gonna flip through the days on my solar setup on the roof here, is you can see some days you're generating basically nothing. Um, those perfect days with that perfect curve are pretty few and far between. And here what I'm doing is I'm actually flipping back towards summer. So um, in summer, typically here, it's sunnier than it would be in the fall. Um, but you can see it's still pretty erratic. So my major concern with having solar panels as your one and only fuel source for a power outage, or even if you're trying to be off grid, is it's just not very reliable. And so you would need a lot of storage. That's the reason why I'm, I'm supplementing this with the propane generator, because when you have a stretch of a couple days where you're just not generating, you can flip on that generator and have a clean source of power that will fill in the gaps when you're generating with solar it doesn't really work out. So coming back to goal zero specs, I still can't make heads or tails of this. If you took a 100 watt panel and you assumed you got say 70 or 80 watts, um, that's still at 80 watts, 12 and a half hours. So I'm not really sure where this number of 16 to 40 comes from. I don't know if they're just being super, super conservative, which would be fine, I suppose. But you can really expect that in a nutshell, that if you had a 100 watt panel on a Yeti 1000, it would probably take two clear days for that to fill from say 25% level. Uh, I wouldn't recommend discharging it below 25% anyway. Um, if you have two 100 watt panels so for 200 watts total, I would say that's the sweet spot because on a sunny day from 25%, you could probably fill this thing up. And if you had three, that would be a little bit better, but you can see with those solar charts, basically either you have a pretty sunny day or the output drops dramatically and you could have 20 panels and it's really not going to get you there. So I would say for the 1000 Yeti 1000, I would stick with about 200 watts and spend your money on other ways to generate power if solar isn't working out for you. Well, thanks for listening. Bye.